we have our guest today, Tom Rousel. Tom, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Duncan. Thank you for having me. You're most welcome. And um, if I may just start off with you, and then I'll come back to Richard. That's all right, Richard. You just ignore me, I'm fine. That's <laughs> all right. Oh, tell us about your experience with documentary films and things. Uh, I've had a, a, a lot of failures uh, with, over the years with attempted films, but I keep uh, trying again and again. Um, and one of this has started when I finished my degree um, in 2007. The first film I went into uh, to work on was a, a drama. Um, a, f a friend of mine from Bel Bel University of Belfast was a, a playwright, and he had a script that he wanted to convert into film. I turned it into a, a film script. I got some actors to agree to work on it for, for you know, very little money. I got uh, cameras uh, and equipment sorted out. We, we filmed the whole thing in London and in um, Sussex. Uh, the, the lead actor was, in fact, uh, William Sellers, who is Peter Sellers' grandson. Oh, excellent. Um, One of your favourites, I understand, Richard. And yours. And yours. Yeah, <laughs> Peter Sellers is really... Did you know they were born in India? You know, all that uh, goony lot? I do. I yes. do. Goony lot, I call I them. I particularly remember the film with Sophie Loren. The Millionaire something? Uh, so we had to try and give away a million That's pounds. That's right. And he, and he just couldn't, couldn't, couldn't do it. Away. It was very, very funny, actually. Yeah, yeah he's very, very good. Mm. And the Pink Panther, don't forget. I remember those very well. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that was just you know, reminiscing, you know. Being being there is that was uh, that him? That's my favourite. Uh, is it? Personally. Oh, excellent. But, um, yeah, that unfortunately. Was it colour or black and white? The the film, uh, my one, it was a mixture actually. Right. There was uh, scenes that were uh, rather morbid, so they were black and white. It was kind of an arty film. Right. But um, it uh, it. Despite best intentions and some great contributions and great performances from these actors working for virtually nothing, they, uh, the film flopped. But we never even got past editing because the cameraman working for free uh, didn't um, film the footage in the correct aspect that we could use it. I, I was a bit disheartened by that, obviously, for a while because I had put so much energy coming out of a degree and being very um, ambitious. I, 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 before starting the film, I'd gone on a, a work experience to Qatar um, and um, stayed in the Middle East for a month or two working for a film production company and learning about editing and, and filmmaking uh, with a company called Smart Global Productions. And when I came back to England, I was really, you know... You were fired up. I was fired up, and yeah. then I was rather deflated after that, uh, that, that, that uh, uh, anticlimactic ending to that project. But, but you haven't given up, you see, so no. that's the, the, the essence behind it is keep going, well, keep you have, going. You, ha you haven't heard anything yet. No, oh, 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 the next one. <laughs> next one. Uh, and more, more to come. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I went, um, the following year in 2008, I went to, uh, I'd become, uh, gotten into print media, f f finding that I, I was uh, quite well good at writing, so I, I, work, I got some work experience with GQ magazine and Vanity Fair magazine oh, okay. and started writing for some uh, fashion magazines and youth magazines like uh, ID magazine and Days and Confused magazine. And I'd gone to Venezuela in 2008, though, to pursue, to try and film by myself, or well, with the aid of a co-producer in Venezuela, um, a film about the Bolivarian revolution there mm -hmm. and cosmetic surgery and its relationship between, it sounds a, a strange connection, mm. but... Um, People is, is paying too, many, too much attention to the political view of the country instead of the problems that are going on in the country. I'm not talking about only the people in the government, but also the people that live here. Like, I mean, I go to work every day and I go to school every day because I want to make my country better. It doesn't, like, there's people here that leave for politics, you know? What the Chavez did, what he didn't do, or what he's gonna do. Okay, fine. That's it's it's good to be well informed, but it's also good to work every day hard for your country. I made the film, but they didn't distribute it in the end. But I did at least complete the film this time. So um, you checked the aspect ratio yourself. <laughs> yeah, but I was filmed this time rather than filming on industry standard good cameras. I filmed it on uh, my own mini DV camera, which is so it's very low quality to be honest. Uh, you can see that film on the internet if you wanted to. I'm glad that I finished it, and I got uh, a lot of, uh, you know, interviews with, you know, pr uh, professors of sociology at various universities mm -hmm. in Venezuela. I travelled around the country, interviewing students. Some of them uh, were 
adamant supporters of the of, the, of Hugo Chavez, the, the president at the time who recently passed away. Yeah. Other than other than were um, you know avid opponents. So I tried to get a a good perspective on it. And um, so where does the cosmetic surgery come into that? Alex? Well, basically there's a, va a vast class divide in Venezuela, yeah. and um, he's a socialist president was trying to bridge that divide. Uh, one of the ways we, one thing with fa was famous in Venezuela is that a lot more women get cosmetic beauty surgery there uh, than in other countries. And you wouldn't imagine that was the case for a, a third world country. Um, but it is. And basically I wanted to see why is it that this is what's generally considered a luxury procedure is so uh, popular in quite a poor country. Okay. So it was a way of looking at the class divide and the wealth divide and the president himself had spoken out against it and I wanted to I just wanted to use this thing as a way of looking at the culture. How of the long country. were you go there in Venezuela? I was there for two and a half months, so right, quite, quite a while. Yeah. Oh, so you've made the one which was in, in the right ratio, the mm -hmm. right aspect. Second one, <laughs> which was in black and white and the distributed didn't, didn't distribute. <laughs> now the third one, what's that? <laughs> the third one was um, the third one is what I'm working on now. My documentary is exclusively about why how the Anglo-Saxons, which is the term we use to the tribal people who, who lived in uh, southern Britain at that time, became Christian. And, and what the, um, how that uh, part of history affects now, today, and what elements of that remain in the landscape and the, the, the names of the places in England and the way that we do things in England, for example. So there was, uh, that was basically, I'm interviewing different people who are, whose lives are somehow tied into those cultures that emerged in those times, like sword fighters and um, historians. I go to certain churches who very old, with old um, monuments uh, in them, which have uh, a combination of Christian and pre-Christian imagery involved in them, which was used to convert people to the new religion, which was Christian. Christianity was new to these people in, in those days. They'd never heard of it. So. Um, that's, uh, but, but this documentary, I'm actually making it myself now, like the other ones, because uh, the, after finding that the production company w wanted to make changes to it, but I've learned from my previous mistakes, and I've got the right people on the bus this time, and there's um, some, I'm using really high in industry, high, high standard industry equipment, and um, keeping costs to a minimum, and I should have finished this film by August, yeah. Uh, and then it's going to be a case of promotion and uh, spreading the word. Yeah.